Uh, Minister Bryan, you're very welcome here this morning. Minister, I mentioned the remote area grant back here in September when Minister Foley was here. That grant is available, although a lot of people may not even know about it. For people who are living outside the distances of the school, I asked for an increase in the payment rate on that grant. Fuel has gone up. The daily rate uh, is currently 130 for children living between 3.2 kilometres and 4.7 kilometres from the school. If someone is 9.7 kilometres away, they get 5.10 a day. Has there been any progress on the increasing of these daily rates? This would take a, a bit of pressure off parents as well. That grant is paid annually. Is there any way it could be paid each term? In light of the cost of li living crisis, is there any way these applications could be submitted after each of the three school terms. That might also alleviate some pressure on parents somewhat. But now, possibly from the advertisement I gave this grant, I hear from people who are applying for it and they're finding it almost impossible to get. It is important to note that the application for the school transport must be made before a remote area grant may be considered. Sign up on the Bus Erin website for school transport is not user friendly at all. The apply for school transport page has no sign up button, just a wall of text and hidden in the middle of that it tells you to make an account to apply. Why make it so difficult? Just have a form there or a, or a big button, Bus Erin should change this immediately. Uh, Bus Erin operates the school transport scheme on behalf of the department, no one can reach them or the section of the department responsible for administering this scheme. I looked into it online yesterday. It's not clear at all how to apply or where to apply to. You'd be forgiven for thinking the department didn't actually want anyone availing of this grant and was hiding it away. How many children are a receipt of this grant? How many applications are made, granted and refused each year? Can we get some transparency around this? Parents all, all, all over the country um, are reporting that they don't know where to start applying. They are finding, they can't find the form, they've been given the runaround and we are running this, are we running this scheme or are we not? So hopefully Minister I can get some clarity today um, around the administration of this grant and how we're going to improve it. But Minister, now that I have you here, in relation to, to the school tra transport scheme, it has been you know, disappointing this year and particularly challenging uh, in, in light of what uh, the increased numbers uh, seeking um, school transport this year. I have children, um, Ukrainian children, there's 30 Ukrainian children that arrived here in Stamullen, uh, and in Gormanstown in the last um, month, I can't find a school for them. Um, when I do find a school for them, I need to find school transport for them. And I already know that we can't get school transport for children that are in Gormanstown School at this moment um, to the local um, school as well. So there are challenges there. So school transport is, is a particular issue. But certainly for children that have just come here from uh, Ukraine, it's important that we're able to facilitate them. But the remote area grant is what I'm particularly interested in hearing from you this morning. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Senator, and you have four minutes to respond, Minister. Chair, and I would like to thank the Senator for raising this matter today. Uh, before I address the specific issue raised, I would like to provide an outline of the extent of the school transport service. Uh, the school transport scheme is a significant operation managed by Bus Air and on behalf of the Department of Education. In the last school year, 1, 121,400 children, including 15,500 children with special education needs, were transported on a daily basis to primary and post-primary schools throughout the country. The cost of the scheme in 2021 was €289 million. Euros. The school transport scheme is an important service for families and children, and the purpose of the scheme is having regard to available resources to support the transport to and from school of children who reside remotely from their nearest school. In July 2022, the government announced funding for the waiving of the school transport scheme fees for the 2022-23 school year as part of a wider package of cost of living measures. School transport ticket registration for the 22-23 school year closed on the 29th of July, by which time almost 130,000 applications were received for mainstream school transport. This figure includes 44,299 new applications as well as rollovers from the previous school year. Already over, 1, over 127,800 tickets have issued for the 22-23 school year. At the start of the last school year, there were circa 103,600 children carried on mainstream school transport services, so already 24,000 additional places have been created. The normal eligibility criteria of the scheme still apply and tickets are allocated in line with this criteria. Pupils at primary level are eligible 
where they live no less than 3.2 kilometres from, and are attending their nearest primary school at post-primary level. Students who live no less than 4.8 kilometres from, and are attending their nearest post-primary school, are deemed eligible. Any pupils who do not meet these criteria are deemed not eligible or otherwise known as concessionary applicants and are allocated a ticket based on availability of a seat when all eligible children have been catered for. In line with normal practice, all eligible children who completed the application and ticket registration process in time for this school year will be accommodated on school transport services where such, transports, where such services are in operation. As part of the budgetary process, some additional funding has been approved for the scheme, which will allow officials in the department, in consultation with Bus Aaron, to consider and evaluate where temporary additional capacity may be available. Uh, the initial focus will be where families applied on time and who previously held concessionary tickets. However, it is important to stress that this is subject to capacity considerations. Constraints in sourcing vehicles and drivers in certain areas of the country may also mean that it may take a number of weeks to explore solutions for additional capacity. The specific issues mentioned by the Senator relate to remote area grants where school transport is not available. Families who wish to avail of school transport and have their eligibility status assessed should apply online before the closing date to Bus Aaron. Bus Aaron, which operates the school transport scheme on behalf of the Department, will then contact all applicants regarding their eligibility for school transport. Families must complete the application process before the closing date. Where there is no transport service available for eligible children, Bus Aaron will forward the applicant's details to the Department and officials from the school transport section uh, will contact families directly regarding the remote area grant. It is important to note that an application for school transport must be made before any grant can be considered for an eligible student. Grants are based on distance from home to school and range from one, one euro per day to the maximum daily allowance payable of five euros ten per day per family. Uh, as you may be aware, the Department commenced a review of the school transport scheme. The review is being conducted with a view to examining the current scheme, its broader effectiveness and sustainability, and to ensure it serves students and their families adequately. Uh, and I spoke to an official in the Department this morning, and she hopes that that review will be uh, concluded by the end of the year, uh, and also made it very clear that the, the uh, allocations and the per day rates are also part of the review as well, so they're a bit under consideration at the moment as well. Thank you, Minister. And, uh, Senator, you have a, a, a minute to respond. Minister, and I suppose, really, I, I, my, my question this morning was really all around the remote area grant, um, and I, I appreciate uh, the response that you got from uh, the school transport section there that took up three minutes of your speech, but it, it really is about the, the remote area grant. There are many, I mean, you, you told me there about the 121,000 that have got school, school transport, there are 130 that didn't, uh, that the 130 applications, so therefore there's 9,000 people that didn't. So those 9,000, have they been sent out uh, a remote area grant uh, scheme application form that they might be able to uh, avail of it? Um, it's just not user friendly. Uh, even though people have actually applied for the school transport scheme, um, it is not user friendly to let them know that they, if, if they didn't get it, they can actually apply for this remote area grant. So really and truly, if you could update the school transport section and their website in relation to it, it would be most helpful for parents. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. And Minister, you have the last minute to respond. Thank you, Chair. And, and just to clarify, 24,000 additional places have been created this year. Um, I will certainly take your um, issues raised in relation to the website uh, back to the department. I did actually raise with the official today as well about the visibility of the application process for the remote grant, so that's now on the radar, but I, I will raise it with the minister as well, and indeed your suggestions around staging the payment over, over a, a, a couple of allocations during the years sounds like a good one as well, and I'll take that back to the ministers as well. Thank you. Okay.